Hey, what is up, guys, and welcome to the KX Podcast, episode 13. Today's episode is sponsored by... I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> I don't have a sponsor. Nobody sponsors me. It's just me sitting alone in this room here with a bunch of ideas, a pen, a paper, and a mic ready to go. That is the environment I'm bringing to you. <laughs> okay, so today we are talking about the Vized system. Uh, I understand this isn't a topic that is as passionate for others as it is for myself or the people who want to be phys ed teachers. Um, but if you've ever been through the phys ed program, if you've been through a uh, grade school where there was a phys ed program, you probably have an opinion about phys ed class. You probably have your own feelings about how it went and you might actually have something uh, of value to offer. So if you have any ideas or arguments you want to leave in the comments section, I encourage you to do so. That being said, uh, I have a bit of experience with the phys ed system just in the fact that you know I've done my 12 years of schooling going through it and then I have my university experiences learning about the phys ed system and then actually being in the gym classes with uh, as a student teacher while I was working underneath the teacher that actually taught the phys ed class so I've got a bit of opinions and stuff that I've really wanted to talk about um, but I didn't really want to because of the fact that I was going to be a phys ed teacher and I didn't want uh, to enter a career with a podcast talking about all the issues of my career. Not a very strong way to start your career. That being said, as you guys know, uh, I've changed my mind and I'm not going to be a phys ed teacher. I'm not finishing my phys ed education. And uh, here I am talking about my opinions. So thank you guys anyways for watching and listening so far. And uh, I appreciate your views. All right, let's get into it. So I love phys ed. Growing up, it was one of the few classes that I really enjoyed. I was usually that kid, you know, buzzing in his seat, couldn't wait for gym class, and all the other classes kind of sucked. Uh, that's just me. I'll, you know, everyone has different experiences when it comes to the phys ed class. A lot of people hate it. A lot of people love it. You'll, you'll find that everybody has their very own experiences and feelings about phys ed class. That's not really that surprising because everybody is very much in tune with their body and how things make them feel. So yeah, some people might not like math, they might not like history, but when it comes to phys ed, it's very personal because you're doing a lot of moving, you're worried about embarrassing yourself in front of others, you may be competing against others in games, you know, you're sweating and in junior high when your hormones kick in, gym class becomes a very, very personal place. So you'll find people very much have their own <laughs> thoughts and opinions about phys ed class. Anyway, I was one of those kids that loved it, um, and as some of you may know, phys ed really changed my life in high school because that is where I started to develop as a person. I started getting into football, and then I started taking phys ed class even more seriously, and my uh, phys ed teacher was also the head coach of the football team, who I really looked up to, and uh, I, can, I can personally say that phys ed bettered my life. I came out of high school a better person because of phys ed. Now, I understand that's kind of a rare experience. It doesn't really move a lot of people but that was just my experience so naturally I wanted to be a phys ed teacher because I wanted to have that same influence on other people I wanted to find those kids who are like me kind of struggling with self-identity and, and who they are and, and what value they had to offer the world and I wanted to give them that very same influence uh, so I went into the phys ed system you know started taking education classes, kinesiology classes, stuff like that. And I loved it. Honestly, I loved it. And I want to talk about how the phys ed system, especially, I'm going to start from the education standpoint, okay, from like the teaching standpoint. I think that it is flawed. I think that it sucks. And I think that it needs to improve. Again, these are my opinions. They're not the truth. They're just what I think. The first thing is that if you want to be a phys ed teacher, you're grouped in with other education teachers. So if you want to be a history teacher, a math teacher, they just put all the teachers in the same classes and put you all through the same classes, which I think is a bit of a problem because a lot of teachers have a very hard time relating. Now, there are some classes that should be grouped together because there's some underlying concepts and philosophies as a teacher that I think every teacher should know no matter what they teach. But then there's other classes that are completely useless to you if you want to be a band teacher or an art teacher. So it, it very much caters to classroom teachers. So if you want it to be a math or a history or science teacher, whatever that is, that's that's very much who the education system 
as far as education goes, caters to. Now, uh, like, for example, I remember sitting in a class where we were learning about how to arrange the desks in your classroom and how to set up the desks so the students can best pay attention and best receive your voice. And we learned about the dynamics and how your voice bounces off the walls, how to keep their attention, all that stuff. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm going to be in a gym. <laughs> I don't have furniture. What does this apply to me for? You know, and I'm, I'm a university student and I'm thousands in debt from, from school. I'm sitting here like, oh, I'm paying for this class and this is completely useless. There are so many classes I sat through that were just totally useless. They did not help me. I didn't learn anything. So constantly I had to put the responsibility on myself to raise my hand and say, hey, how would this apply in a gym? You know, like you need to have a gym voice and the students don't sit at desks. So you have to arrange them in rows. And how do you get the, the students from across the gym who are shooting hoops to come pay attention to you in half a second when you want to explain something? None of that stuff is, is taught to you. So I think that there's a lot of years and time that aren't necessary and I know that I've talked to phys ed teachers who hear about all this schooling that I had to do, and they're like, wow, it was not like that when I was in it. Let me explain. So to be a phys ed teacher, you need to have, uh, you need to major in kinesiology. So you need to have a degree in kinesiology, which, you know, that's not uncommon. Like all other teachers need to have two degrees, but the kinesiology degree is massive. You need so many credit hours, substantially more classes and time than other classes. I don't know why this is. You have to take a lot of things that aren't really practical or apply to phys ed classes or teachers, but you have to anyway. So because the kinesiology degree is so massive, anyone who wants to be a phys ed teacher usually needs to take an extra year just to finish up their dual degrees because not only do they need their teachable major, that one degree, they also need to have a degree in education. So usually these phys ed teachers have to work out two degrees at once or they have to do one before the other and that's that's a lot of work i mean you could technically could get it done in five years if you just got every class you needed and everything lined up perfectly and you gave up everything else in your life except for school you probably could get it done in five years but realistically six years even seven years for some because it's not easy to get into these classes because you know there's a lot of kids trying to get into the same classes and it's the setup of uh, university that I went to at least, uh, was not that efficient. And again, I sh I'm realizing now I should probably preface that I'm speaking from experiences from the university I went to, uh, the University of Winnipeg. So university you went to could be totally different. You could have a much better phys ed system, but from my understanding, this is generally how the phys ed system is in a lot of places. So anyways, you need to take all that extra time and bear in mind, you're taking up this extra time, but a lot of the classes that you're taking are, do not apply to you as a phys ed teacher. You just have to take them, which makes me think like, why is this system set up so poorly? It just sucks eager teachers into this system of paying for classes they don't want or don't need and having to sit through them, have to be tested and just continuing. And, and you're trying to work together with all these other teachers that you have a hard time connecting with because they're on a different level. They want to be in a classroom. It's very different. If, if you want to be uh, a, like a phys ed teacher, art teacher, band teacher, these teaching jobs that are totally unlike the other ones, well, maybe not art teacher, but anyway, I just don't know why it's not set up so that you can get it done in less than six years. It's completely ridiculous because they only start teaching you practical gym things within your third year of the education system. Your first year is spent learning about like inner city and your practicum isn't even in a gym your first year. Your first year is done uh, doing volunteer inner city work so you have a better understanding of the city. Like I get that. Uh, I think that that's a great thing to do to volunteer inner city and you. I think everyone should have an understanding of their cities. But if you're a university student learning to be a teacher, why do you have to go to drop-in centers? Like it's just, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like I see the value in it. I just don't see how it connects to teachers. And then your, your second year, you're pretty much, if you're a teacher, you're pretty much just, you're just getting thrown around with the wind. Like you're lucky if you end up in a classroom in your education uh, practicum that is somewhat relevant to what you want to do. Like my second year in education, I just ended up going from 
class to class to class saying, hey, where you you have room for me in this class? You need me to hand out textbooks? Like I need somewhere to be. I never was actually stationed anywhere in any class. And sometimes I would, and there were two student teachers in the class because there were just so many student teachers in this school. And, I would, and then I would, you know, like for example, one day I went to uh, the vice principal who was in charge of the student teachers and I'm like, hey, I'm ready to go. Like what class do you want to put me in today? And he's like, oh, you're going into a uh, grade eight French today. You're going to help out there. And I'm just like, uh, I, c I can't speak French. I don't know what you want me to do here. And <laughs> so I'm in the French class. I don't have a freaking idea what the teacher is talking about. These kids probably know more than me because I haven't taken French since I was their age. And I sucked at it. I failed at almost everything. That's why I don't speak French. So I'm a student teacher. I'm there to help. So kids are asking me for help. And I'm, and I'm like, I got a French dictionary. And I'm just looking up looking up words, looking up answers. I had no idea what I was doing. And this is someone who wanted to be a phys ed teacher in a practicum in, in a grade eight French class. That's that's complete garbage. How is that setting up the student for any kind of success? Like, yes, you should leave your comfort zone, but in a practical sense, like that's totally useless. So in my third year of education, I was able to get into a gym. And that, by that point, I was sick of all this other garbage. I'm like, please put me in a gym. I'm talking to the, the principal like, please put me in the gym. That's where all my skills are. That's where I'll be of most value. Like, I'm I'm asking you to please place me there. So he did. He he heard my he heard my cry for mercy and he put me in a gym class, which I was very fortunate uh, to have for some reason three years and in, into learning how to be a phys ed teacher. I finally ended up in a gym, which is pretty much where I learned everything about being a phys ed teacher. The university didn't teach me a thing about being a phys ed teacher. Like I learned some good things about classroom management, but nothing about how to manage a gym class. Like I learned all of that in practicum, you know, how, how to grade students in the gym class, how to set up your own phys ed system. I learned that all in my third year, first time in a gym, which makes me wonder, huh, you know, why don't you just <laughs> get students into a gym on their first year? You know, there might be a really good reason for it. This is just how my university did it, but that's garbage. You know, like, there's no reason that, that uh, I'm trying to think of an example, like trade workers or people who want to be massage therapists or paramedics or, or um, I don't know, like, people who can go to a college and, and get out in two years and they get placed into a job basically or they give you an easier time transitioning into a real job and then these university students don't even get to be placed in a class they want to be in after three years three years this is out of like six years in university so i think that it just could be set up better for teachers anyway like as a as a rough start to a teaching career when it takes you that long to get into a gym and, and I don't know why the university classes aren't about phys ed. Like maybe, I think, oof, I don't even want to say a quarter of my classes were relevant to phys ed class. But maybe that's what it was. Anyway, I, I kind of had a negative experience. I'm sure other people don't. Um, or they may have, they may have not minded as much as I did. You know, maybe they, were, they enjoy their classes. You know, you might be one of those people who completely disagrees with me. And that's totally cool. Like, I'm super happy for you if you went through it and loved it all. Um, I just think six years is unnecessarily long. And then I, I remember looking at the phys ed teachers that I was working with. And obviously, they've been through their own schooling and they've been through their own experiences. And they have so much to offer the class. Like, you're in university for five, six years you know, you're learning a lot of stuff. Like you could run a class really well with all the information you take in, but that's not how the phys ed system wants you to teach classes. They just want you to teach them games. Uh, you know, that's obviously kind of the, the old traditional model and there's some new phys ed models coming out. Um, but I just saw a lot of wasted potential and so much effort goes into just managing the classroom. And I just remember seeing my uh, practicum teacher running his fingers through his hair, leaning over his desk because he was just so stressed out because all he wanted to do was teach his kids something about movement or like fundamental movement skills or a sport and the kids are just all not giving him any respect at all. 
and it was like it was kind of heartbreaking to see like I remember that very visually just like a teacher who was so eager to teach and just just defeated by you know the, the lack of respect that he was getting as a phys ed teacher now, I'm not saying all phys ed teachers deal with this. I'm sure every teacher does to some degree. But that was a, a moment that really marked in my mind. Like, why is this guy not getting respect? Like, why is he not being respected like other teachers are? Which brings me to the next point that I want to talk about. Um, I was kind of talking about all this stuff from, like, a teaching perspective and student teachers and all this. But now I want to talk more about the whole respect thing that the phys ed uh, class and teachers don't get don't really know why this is it's just kind of the norm like everybody sees phys ed class as a blow-off class and I mean I'm not gonna lie like I enjoyed it so much I thought it was like the easy class of the day but that was just because I really enjoyed it but a lot of kids just it's just seen as the blow-off class it's the class you can skip without repercussions and it just it sucks because it's it's reinforced by society it's almost as if it's just like a cultural norm that the phys ed teacher doesn't know as much as the other teachers it's not as important like who cares about gym class it's kind of like that the that jack black analogy from uh, the movie school of rock when he says those who can't do teach and those who can't teach teach gym <laughs> the bottom of the tier and it's like man that's that is so much garbage they're in, they're in, in school for the longer periods of time to become phys ed teachers you need to know so much stuff before you could be a phys ed teacher it's it's you have to learn more than you'll even ever apply in your gym class so like if the most damaging thing is if teachers in schools make jokes like within the class about phys ed teachers or about the class or like skip gym class come here to finish your assignment like i, don't, I know that that doesn't happen all the time but that's easily the most damaging or you know like if your parents hated gym class or your friend circle hates gym class like if the people around you hate it and and you know influence you in that way you might grow up to hate it too like if your parents hated gym class or never found their self-esteem in gym class or whatever they might you know not take it as seriously when they have a kid going through it which is going to be super damaging for the kid because the important thing about the phys ed class is that it's supposed to prepare you for life outside of school once you're not in kind of a structured society you need to know about your body and how it works you know phys ed class is, is more than just learning your sex ed learning how your body works in that area and then kicking you out into the world after grade 12 like most students are not prepared to even take care of their own body after high school you know that's why you see so many so many people go through high school and then after high school boom they get they get beer bellies or they get they're they're you know the most popular kids in schools with the most rocking bodies and then a few years after high school you look back at them and you're like whoa what happened well your body caught up with you your <laughs> your hormones kind of established you stopped growing and you never learned how to take care of yourself so now you're taking care of yourself the same way you did in high school and you weren't prepared for the rest of your life phys ed is super crucial you know it's back to the respect thing it should be respected as much as a math class like you yeah you should have basic math skills going into the world but you should also have a basic understanding of body skills you should be able to know how to run the amount of people who don't actually know how to run like yeah if you were being chased by a, a lion you would probably run you wouldn't have to know how but knowing how to run correctly is a concept that most people aren't even aware of they kind of you kind of just run and your arms flail and your torso twists in the wind and you just end up burning through three times the energy you have to running such a basic skill but so many people don't know how to do it so how are you going to meet your basic exercise needs out of high school if you don't ever respect your class or care enough to learn about them and that's not necessarily uh, the student's fault because they're only learning what the teacher's teaching them but the teacher only gets so much time in the classroom, the phys ed teacher. So students are only are very limited to how much actual classroom content they take in. Now, in my opinion, I think phys ed shouldn't just be in the gym every time. I think that there should be designated uh, times where they're in the classroom learning about practical things like 
macronutrients and how much water to drink and how to avoid getting fat, how to avoid dying from a heart attack. You know, like those are, there's a lot of really valuable things, but they kind of get crammed all into like one class a month if you're lucky. And so why is that? Why are there not more phys ed classes in the classroom? Well, it's because phys ed is also seen as a way of getting kids active because kids don't get active enough themselves anymore. They don't go out and run and play. I don't know what age I'm talking about right now. <laughs> I'm not saying a 17-year-old is supposed to go frolic in the backyard. I'm just saying if if we are, ex it's expected that kids don't know how to be active or it's we assume that they're not going to make their active needs. So phys ed class also doubles as their way of getting their exercise in. So if our society was more active as a whole, or it was a little more of a cultural norm for, you know, our students and kids to get more physical activity, then the phys ed class wouldn't be leaned on so hard for getting kids active. You know, if it was like, oh yeah, for sure, like, my kids are getting an hour a day of exercise in high school, yeah, you know, then then the phys ed system would probably give more time, this is my, my thoughts at least, but maybe give more time for the students in the classroom to learn more stuff about their bodies because like I'm a personal trainer and I can't tell you the amount of times that I have to explain the most very very basic things to people like there's so many health and fitness myths that float around that people still believe like you th people like people still think that if you do core workouts, you're going to lose fat or on your abs. If you want to have abs, all you got to do is crunches and sit-ups and the fat will melt off your body. Like these are basics that people should know about. They should, people should know how to lift weights. They should know how to take care of their bodies after high school, right? That's why we teach them math. So that after high school, when you get a job, you've learned practical information. You know, it's it's it should be seen as critical to your future as math because... If you thrive in the classroom and you're super smart and you're super ready for business or whatever career you're going into, but you're like 100 pounds overweight, you might just die early of a heart attack. Like all that extra information you had and career knowledge is completely wasted if your body is useless. Your body should be number one because your body you're taking with you from the day you're born to the day you die. How much you know about the world is will become essentially useless if you get sick you know you need to know how to keep yourself from getting sick and keep yourself from getting injured most students just don't meet the requirements they should in high school so what makes them think that they're going to meet the health and fitness requirements expected of them when they're adults and they're responsible for everything on their own like just to put it into perspective for you uh, as an adult you should be getting, and this isn't like my thoughts, this is like government set standards that apply to Canada, America, everywhere else. If you're a human somewhere, then these very same rules apply to you, okay? No one is exempt from these. These are critical to your, your health. So as an adult, you should be getting a moderate amount of exercise. Like by moderate, I mean um, 150 minutes a week, I think it is which works out to, uh, what was the number, two, two and a half hours of exercise uh, a week, okay, two and a half hours of exercise a week, so it doesn't seem like that much, but most people don't get it, or if you're exercising vigorously, so you're doing, instead of going for longer runs, you're maybe doing sprints, you may be in a high intensity sport, uh, 75 minutes, so that's an hour and 15 minutes a week, okay, that's just that's for adults okay and this is that's not for students for students you need an hour it yeah it's pretty much an hour a day and on top of that it's recommended that uh you get some like resistance training so you're working with weights so you're strengthening your body and bones th three times a week okay so that's at least an hour a day so that's why they lean on the physics system so much it's like well if you have an hour hour gym class then they're getting their hour that day. But that's not even true because the first 10 minutes of gym class are the students getting changed and, you know, just like waiting for everybody to get ready and everyone's kind of shooting hoops, standing around, talking on their phones, whatever. Then the gym class starts. 
The teacher explains the gym class to them, maybe does a, some warm up stretching, and the last po- and then they have to explain the game that they're going to do or whatever activity they're doing, and then the actual amount of time they they actually are active ends up not being very much. And then, you know, obviously there's the time when the students need time to go change and get ready for the next class. So majority of the class is spent getting ready for the class and cooling down from the class. So they're not really getting their hour a day, which is another reason why I think they should get more time in the classroom because they're not even getting their full hour in gym class anyway. And how many times do you have gym class a week? It's usually like every second day. So you're really only getting two, three at best gym classes a week which means that you're for sure spending less days of the week than more getting your hour of exercise in. So the system isn't really set up to thrive. And while phys ed classes, I know, uh, I believe it's in Canada, is mandatory, like you can't opt out of gym classes, you used to be able to do that. Now they've made it mandatory, but, but I know that there's kind of been a bit of a push to make it unmandatory. And I've heard a lot of students and people complaining about having to go to gym class. And it's hard to fault someone who hates gym class because they don't know the value in it because the value of gym class isn't explained to them. It's not explained to anybody aside from it's the place where you go to play sports for an hour and if you suck at sports, then you're in for a crappy hour. Um, And, you know, that's just because it's just not taken as seriously as the other classes. I don't know why that is because, as I've explained earlier, it is equally if not one of the most important classes for students. And, you know, the gym is, it's like, it's a really hard place to teach because you have this massive area and you have students that are, you know, depending on what age you're teaching, you know, if you have kids in elementary school, uh, those kids have been in desks all day, or this is even junior high. They've been sitting all day, you know, maybe bored out of their minds in classes, don't really care they get to gym class and like some kids use that as their uh their way to get all that extra pent-up energy out of them and they're buzzing and they're running around and screaming and it's kind of hard to keep them under control you know you got to round them up and tell them to be quiet and whatever and then on the opposite side of that you have kids that just absolutely hate it and they're just standing around on their phones because for some reason in the gym class it's more acceptable to like not do what you're supposed to do or just be on your phone or oh my stomach hurts oh oh, my leg hurts there's so many like ways for kids to get out of doing gym class because it's just like not taken seriously like they're not held accountable if you know if you're sick in math class you still got to do the math stuff you know the teacher doesn't say okay you can go color in the back you kind of like if you're there you're expected to take part so i don't know why it's different for phys ed class and like Another reason, like, if kids don't bring their gym clothes to gym class, what, they just they just get sent out? they just like, okay, yeah, you don't have your gym clothes, eh, I can't do anything about it. And then they just, get, they just get a free pass on that class. You know, and if you don't have your gym clothes, what usually ends up happening is the teacher says, okay, well, I guess you're going to do gym in, in whatever clothes you're wearing now. Which sucks, because... Now the kids are they have limited range of movement, which means they can't kick a ball like they could in gym shorts. They can't reach their arms over their head because they're wearing something that doesn't give them that movement. And how motivated are you going to be to run in a class when you're wearing uh, jeans and slippers? You know, I, I don't know who's wearing jeans and slippers, but <laughs> a bad example. But you know what I mean. Like your body isn't going to want to move if you're in clothes that aren't built to move so and you know that's just gym clothes so it's like a huge barrier like if you go to math class i know i keep using math class as an example but math class is kind of a staple class in our society that's why i keep going back to it but if you go to math class you don't have a pencil and paper it's like the teacher doesn't say okay well you don't have a a pencil and paper so I, i guess you're you can just go sit and sit to the side and watch everyone else that's ridiculous. You can't you can't even imagine that. But why is that fine in phys ed class? You need your supplies in math class. You need them in phys ed class. It shouldn't be seen any differently. And another thing that about phys ed class that I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on. But what is with there's like how many tests do you have in phys ed class? Why is it that in other classes you have like one test a week? 
Sometimes you have a quiz every couple of days. But in phys ed class, you have like, what, like two at the most four fitness tests in like the entire year. Can some like like I know physical like uh, like progress happens over a long period of time, so it's not like you can test once a week and there's going to be like huge differences. But like, why why is is it any different than other classes? Like tests are just as important in phys ed classes in another class because. It, it shows you your progress. It, you know, it, it leaves markers, benchmarks you can go back to and see how much you've improved. Except in phys ed class, it's like such a real example because like, wow, I can run faster now. I can stretch into my hamstrings even deeper. I can jump higher. Like those are super real examples of your body doing something, getting better. And if we had more fitness tests or fit, the importance of fitness tests were explained, then I think students might actually care a little bit more about them because outside of the gym, you got to come up with those reasons to be active yourself. You know, when you set goals for yourself, it's, it's essentially kind of like fitness testing in high school. Like you want to hit this PR on the bench press by this date. You want to run a mile in this much time. You know, it's kind of like fitness testing. You want to be able to do this physical activity by this date. Like it's super practical for outside of high school. And you can of say that about a lot of other tests, like tests that actually prepare you for setting goals in the future and looking back at your progress. So I know a lot of people will disagree with me because tests suck. I get it. Like I was a student, I hated tests too. I wasn't even particularly fond of fitness tests, but again, I didn't really understand why they were super important. I just thought that it was the day in gym class where everybody actually had to try so it kind of it kind of sucked. Like I had no problem with trying, but you know, there's that that stigma in the air. It's like, ooh, it's that one of four days this year where we actually have to really try and we have to actually look at how we're doing and assess ourselves. You know, it's yeah. I just don't know why it's not taken as seriously and why it doesn't get more respect than it does. You know, phys ed teachers have a massive responsibility, like a huge responsibility compared to other teachers and preparing them for the rest of their lives, how they're going to operate in their bodies. That's a huge responsibility. And imagine like if these phys ed teachers aren't being respected, no one is, is, you know, valuing the gym class. I can see phys ed teachers getting super unmotivated and frustrated and just saying, all right, screw it. Uh, here's a basketball. Well, let's play a game or here's some dodgeballs, play dodgeballs till the bell rings. Not that there's like, and that's fun. It's fun to play games, but it's like, it's another thing. If you're just giving up on your class, then it's, it's not the teacher's fault or the, or it's, it's not the student's fault. I meant to say it's the teacher's fault. So obviously, you know, on the student side, the students really are not to blame for anything because they're just products of their environment. They're products of the schools they're in, of the opinions they hear from their teachers or other uh, people that came before them who went through their phys ed system who didn't understand it. Uh, I don't know why they see the importance of getting your homework done for history class or whatever language class, but not phys ed. Like phys ed, there's not even any homework unless you take online gym. Yeah, online. Let's talk about online gym. The very idea of online gym makes me want to die. <laughs> what? How can you just the words beside each other? doesn't make sense. And let me tell you something about online gym. I think 90% of people who did online gym are, were lying. They, they opted into online gym because they hated gym class. So they just got their parents to sign off on it because their parents didn't actually care either. Or the student said, okay, I'm going to go for a run. And then just, you know, went to Tim's and came back. And the parents like, oh, well, you were gone for an hour. So I guess you're good. Like there's no uh, sense of accountability if you're in online gym to actually do the activity. So you think, eh, whatever, you know, it's just a class act. Yeah, but that's like potentially one year of their lives where they weren't learning how to run or weren't learning how to throw. Like, I'm talking about fundamental movement skills, which means basic movements that you need for the rest of your life. Like, you think it's not a big deal until you're hanging out with some friends and someone pulls out a ball and you start freaking out because you realize that you can't throw and you can't catch, and you can't run, and you can't do all these basic things. And the very concept of being active with another group of people makes you want to have an anxiety attack. Like, what? what is that? Like, these are just basic 
movement skills. It's like making fun of somebody because they can't add and subtract. Like it, it, it's it's super important, not just in the sense that you're having fun with friends, but like that sense of self-esteem and confidence going into the rest of your life. Like that's important too. Like just feeling confident in your body and what your body can do. That alone is important not just not just your movements and how you move but how you believe in yourself and your ability to do things like if a if you're late for your bus and you see your bus is coming and if you ran you could catch your bus but you don't want to run because you hate running and you're scared people are gonna look at you and judge you that sucks you know that means hey you know you probably should have tried a little bit harder in phys ed class then you would have caught your bus and you wouldn't have missed a class then you would have wouldn't have been falling behind that's all because you decided to be on your phone one day in gym class instead of actually participating with the rest of the students. So I'm going to wrap this up with what I think needs to happen, what I think needs to change. Now, <laughs> I knew I was going to be ranting in this, but I know I'm coming across really aggressive. And I just want to explain that it's because I'm really passionate about this and I've been studying this system and I've been in this system my entire life. And I really, you know, I wrote, wrote down some points and I just wanted to talk about them. So I want to thank you if you're listening this far. All right. So obviously the system needs to change, right? So number one, it needs to be prioritized more. The thought of phys ed being pushed out of students daily lives, like out of the system should be completely retracted. We need phys ed class. Like we need it, period. We need it more than we have it now. We need it almost every single day, not just every second day. It can't be opted out of online gym shouldn't exist in my opinion because the way your body functions is just as important as your math skills the way your body moves knowing how to do things you know can me- me- mean the difference of life and death sometimes you know who knows who knows what could happen to you down the road if you did, never learned how to stretch or, or you never learned anything about core strength you know a slip of a slip on ice might kill you. You know, you might trip and fall down the stairs because you never learned, uh, you never developed the reflexes or all your assistive muscles to catch you and protect you because all you did was sit your whole life. You know, because you never went to gym class, you never took it seriously because no one ever told you it was important, right? Um, another thing I think is important: punishments. Okay, punishments are really. Uh, they're personal in gym class, the way that the phys ed teacher handles uh, punishing students. So punishing students with, you know, go, go run a lap, go do 100 push-ups, whatever. Um, when you punish a student with physical activity, then they just hate that physical activity. And they associate whatever you're punishing them with as a crappy thing. So if a student is repeatedly bad and he repeatedly is punished to do laps... Is this student ever going to want to run again after high school? No. Why? Because it's associated with punishment. Now, any kind of physical activity goes through this this person's brain and thinks, ooh, punishment, brain goes, let's not do that. I don't want to do push-ups because I had to do push-ups as a punishment, and it was super embarrassing. Uh, that being said, if a student is in phys ed class and maybe they're too rowdy or maybe they're, you know, they're on their phones or, or whatever, and the teacher says, you know what, you're not you're not playing nicely, you're not playing along, go sit on the bench for the rest of the gym class. That is equally as bad because now they're not even getting physical activity that day. They're not learning, they're sitting there alone, and they're being publicly humiliated, right? Just like in a math class, if someone was screwing around, uh, if you assign them extra work, they're going to hate that work. And the opposite, if you, <laughs> I can't even say it because it would never happen, but if you were in a math class and you were not paying attention, so the teacher's like, okay, no more math for you. I would kick my feet up and be like, man, this is awesome. Like, this is a sweet punishment. So it's the same way in phys ed class. If a kid hates phys ed class, all they have to do is piss off the teacher and they're out of phys ed. So the punishments are uh, using exercise as a form of punishment or lack of punishment. Not really the solution. So I know that's a tough one, but... I think maybe more appropriate punishment would be the same punishment across all classes, not unique to the class. So maybe you have to stay here for lunch period or you have to go talk to the principal after class or after school, you know, detention. I don't know if those exist. Those are pretty extreme, but 
don't punish them within the realm of the class, right? Same as any other class. So, and like I mentioned earlier, another solution, I think, in my opinion, more health should be taught. Like students like don't know how to eat. They don't know how to, about what a macronutrient is. Students don't learn about carbs after they leave high school. So then they just end up eating KD every day and getting super fat and bloated and lazy because they never learned about, oh, you know, this is a healthy bread. This is an unhealthy bread. Those are super important life skills. More just as important as having mental math skills as learning how to put food in your body because that is your energy, right? It's I'm talking long-term health here. This is the rest of your life. How to, how to avoid putting on weight, how to balance your weight. Stuff like that. Super important, right? I bet anybody listening to this wishes they learned a little bit more about how to control their weight in school so that it wouldn't be so stressful and you didn't have to have a midlife crisis to realize that you needed to be in better shape. Uh, another thing that I think health and fitness tests, right, should be more of those. And and another thing that I think is super cool that I'm starting to see more in phys ed classes, which is a solution that's already being implemented, and that is... Um, Having more options in phys ed classes, because if if kids are just not they don't have competitive nature, they hate um, they hate maybe playing floor hockey or whatever. Like having other options, like having outdoor phys ed classes, or you know like or having boys gym classes and girls gym classes, so that you separate that biological advantage and disadvantage, and maybe they actually want to compete now. You know. Or having like a low-level competition, high-level competition class. So you get all the competitive tryhards on one side of the gym and all the people who aren't as competitive on the other side. I see it work every time in practicum. The kids that don't ever want to participate in full class activities, you group them with other people like themselves, and all of a sudden, look, they're running and throwing the ball. Because they're they're more within the realm of, like, hey, I can actually do it if I'm on this side of the gym. If I'm not with all those people, maybe I will try so that's really good. Um, and sports-specific gym classes like a football class or basketball gym class, those are super awesome because it, once it's related to your sport, you just try harder because you care about it more. So that's kind of the underlying theme is students need to care about gym class. You need to know why they have to run because, you know, they're not going to – no one's putting them at gunpoint and saying you have to run. Like they have to want to do it because of the importance it is, right? You need to see the value that gym class offers. And uh, the last point is just that this whole, for the phys ed system to work, there has to be a societal change, a cultural change. The stigma has to be lifted. Phys ed class has to be respected. It has to be seen as important as other classes. It can't be seen as a blow-off class. If you're a parent and you don't te- like tell your kid why phys ed is important or you know, let them dip out of phys ed class for their dentist appointment, like picking and choosing when it's appropriate for them to not be in school and using phys ed as that sacrificial lamb is super detrimental. So on that scale, you know, it's not just within the school, not just the teachers, it's the parents, it's the grandparents, it's anybody who has an influence in your life. It's how our, our government puts commercials on TV you know, health can't be seen as, as something that sucks or it's as a punishment. It has to be seen as something that is important. And and if students start to see the value in phys ed class, they might try harder. If teachers get more respect, they might try harder. And, you know, it just could be better for all of us. We could all live longer, healthier lives if the phys ed system improves. So I hope that I've provided some informative information on some of the issues and maybe what we can do to solve some of them. Um, but again, these are just my ideas. This is me ranting, uh, and and these are just my thoughts, right? Nothing I say is the truth. It's just what I believe. So I'm very passionate about this, obviously, so I hope I haven't come off as, as too aggressive. But uh, I thank you for listening. I've, you know, I've put out some other classes on phys ed, like why students are unmotivated in the classroom or in the, in the gym class. You can watch that. And I've also put out a video on how to be a successful student teacher in the gym class. So if you're a potential gym teacher and you're listening to this, you might want to go check those out on my page. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. And I encourage you to listen to some of my other podcasts. Stay tuned for more videos. Class next out.